Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just saw the Sound of Freedom movie uh, yesterday, yesterday afternoon in Loveland, Colorado. And uh, I wanted to do a uh, short little video about it. There's a lot of controversy about this movie, which is I find really interesting because it's about uh, human trafficking, basically uh, sex trafficking and, uh, you know, people that recruit these children from all over the world for to use for sex slaves, which which is a fact. And why there is a controversy over this, I really don't understand. Uh, well, I think I kind of do kind of understand, you know, there's media outlets like uh, the New York Times and the Guardian in the UK and Slate Magazine and uh, the Washington Post and the usual suspects who are uh, slamming this movie. They're, they're attacking the film and... Uh, you know, specifically uh, the the main actor Jim Caviezel, saying it's a, it's a QAnon con conspiracy connected film, and having watched it yesterday, I think that's really pretty stupid and ridiculous. There's really nothing political in the movie, and the fact that uh, media outlets like Washington Post and New York Times and all the usual liberal suspects, uh, you know are slamming, you know, this film that's, that's about a, a wicked, perverse thing that, that happens right in this country. Sex slavery, children used as sex slaves, which is about the most reprehensible and perverse and wicked thing there could possibly be and why these media outlets are, have decided to attack this movie because it's way more successful than they thought it was going to be. The only reason I can figure that they're slandering and attacking this film is because it's speaking the truth and because in these media outlets, there's likely a lot of pedophiles that work for these organizations. My guess is that uh, at the Washington Post and New York Times and, and uh, CNN and MSNBC and all these you know, the Guardian newspaper in the UK. Uh, there's probably pedophiles in their ranks. And they're afraid of being exposed. I mean, you know, what is it after, what, three years? Why, why is it that three years after uh, the Jeffrey Epstein scandal, where... He had an island where rich and famous people would uh, would visit, like Bill Clinton and lots of A-list actors and all kinds of uh, you know you know superstars in in entertainment and superstars in sports would uh, go to this island uh, that was known for uh, having a lot of uh, young girls even underage girls that were, that were basically prostitutes, sex slaves. What's her name? Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell is still sitting in jail. And uh, we still haven't, uh, they still haven't released the, uh, the official, the official uh, list of, of A-list celebrities that uh, were uh, visiting this island like Bill Clinton, who had visited the island 26 times, and Hillary Clinton went there, and, uh, you know, all kinds of actors and actresses and, you know, famous politicians and even uh, kings and princes, royalty. You know, these people are, are slime. And uh, my guess is that, uh, you know, the ranks of these liberal media outlets are also full of these, you know, pedophiles and sex perverts that, that like to like to uh, have sex with little children, which is about the most, you know, disgusting, perverted thing I can imagine. 
I think they're a, they're afraid of being outed, frankly. That's why they're attacking the film. I don't think we really understand the, the, the depths of, of depravity, you know, that, that we're dealing with here. And having seen the movie, you know, it's based on a true, true story, although it doesn't follow his story, you know, uh, exactly. But it's based on the story of Tim Ballard, who has rescued a lot of kids out of sex slavery. Um, and I think it's shedding light. And when you shed light like that, the darkness, the darkness reacts and gets angry and gets mad and and uh, tries to slander the light. And I think that's basically what we're seeing. But uh, one of the first things that came to my mind when I saw the film yesterday was a, a Bible verse that came to my mind, it came up, came to my mind about three quarters of the way through the film. And it's from Revelation 18. I'll read it here. I'll read a, a couple of paragraphs. It's about the, the uh, lament over fallen Babylon. That in Revelation, at, in the end, end of time, that uh, Babylon will, will fall. And Babylon, of course, represents uh, the, the spiritual depravity and perverseness and wickedness of of this culture, of this world that is against Christ and is against God and against the people of God. Revelation 18. After this, I saw another angel, by the way, that I'm reading the New International Version, but I'm going to read another version right after this because it, it has a very interesting uh, sentence that I want to bring to light. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling for demons. Interesting. A haunt for every impure spirit. A haunt for every unclean bird. A haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins. Who are my people? Who are my people? That Revelation is talking about. It's talking about the church. Come out of her, my people. At some point, God tells his people, the church, come out of Babylon. That's, that's already assuming that, that, that some of the church or a lot of the church is already, has already been in Babylon. In other words, the church has participated in the perversion, the corruption, the wickedness of the world. And God says, come out of her, my people. In order for them to come out, they would have have had to been in Babylon. He's talking to the church there. Come out of her. Jesus is telling us to come out of Babylon. Get out before it's too late. So that you will not share in her sins. So that you will not receive any of her plagues. For her sins are piled up to heaven. And God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. You see, Babylon, the system of the world, the corruption, the godlessness, the perversion, and the absolute depravity and wickedness of the world gives itself luxury. They love luxury they love the finery of the world they love the 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 five star hotels they love the the luxuries of wine and the best meats and the and uh, they love they love the best things uh, that this perverse and wicked world can provide including uh, sexual perversion give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself in her heart, she boasts, 
I sit enthroned as queen. You see, Babylon, the people of Babylon, are full of arrogance and pride. They're narcissistic. They're full of themselves. And earlier we, we heard Jesus say, telling the church to come out of her. Don't be like the world. Don't be like the perverse, disgusting, wicked world that's arrogant and full of pride and narcissistic. There's a lot of that in the church today, isn't there? I see it every day. Pride, arrogance, narcissism, people that think they're all that. That's not how God's people are supposed to be, and yet that's we see that today. Narcissistic Christians, kind of an oxymoron. In her heart she boasts, I sit as queen. I'm not a widow. I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her, terrified at her torment. They will stand far off and cry, Woe, woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour your doom has come. One hour. You know what I think of when I, when I see that scripture, what comes to mind? 9-11. Every time I read that, that passage right there, that paragraph, I think about 9-11 and what happened in New York City back in 2001. And, and those two gigantic buildings came crashing down. 3,000 people were killed and in, in, in one hour. Those giant towers were brought down and it, it's, that's what comes to my mind when I, when I read that passage. In one hour, Babylon is brought down and made nothing. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron wood, and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh, frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, or today, cars, vehicles, jet airplanes, carriages, and human beings, get this, and human beings sold as slaves. That's the last sentence there. Revelation 18, verse 13. I'll read that again. Cargoes of cinnamon and spice, incense, myrrh, and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. And that's the verse I thought about when I was watching uh, Sound of Freedom yesterday. That's the verse that came into my head. Revelation 18, verse 13. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple silk and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron wood, and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense, myrrh, and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, and horses and carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. That's the exact thing that the movie The Sound of Freedom is talking about and is dealing with. Human beings sold as slaves. And you know, towards the end of the film and at the end of the film, they talked about human trafficking and how big, how large of a of a uh, 
money-making thing it is now? Human traffic, human trafficking, sex slavery, whether it's uh, just little kids or teenagers or 18, 19 year olds is a huge business. It's a billions of dollars of business. And these people are making billions from human trafficking. And that's what the, the Sound of Freedom movie is, is about. And Revelation here says, no one's going to buy your, your cargoes of human beings and, and slaves anymore. Babylon will be destroyed. In the end, all these people making billions of dollars from sex slavery, from like the movie Sound of Freedom, their billions of dollars will be gone. All of their fine cars and mansions that they live in and the finest alcohols and the finest drugs that they can buy from their sex slavery of children will all be gone in one hour. 